Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thank you very much for joining us today for this latest segment of eWeek eSpeaks. It's our series of IT conversations with IT thought leaders from all over the business. Today's interviewee is Kevin Aykroyd. He's the CEO of Pro Unlimited, and this is a very interesting company. Kevin, welcome, very welcome, and um, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us a little bit about your background and about what uh, Pro Unlimited does. You know, I'm a Bay Area tech guy. Uh, I spent the first half of a, a 20 plus year tech career kind of doing uh, venture capitalist up and down Sand Hill Road in the Silicon VC uh, side, side of things and learned a lot of that and enjoyed that for about 12 years. My last uh, hurrah there was actually selling one of those companies to uh, Salesforce.com. Um, and that kind of started the second chapter. I stuck around and ran that business for Salesforce.com for a couple of years. Then when uh, you know, Larry Ellison and Oracle wanted to go chase uh, a new category in the marketing and ad tech space, I went over there and ran um, a big business for Oracle. Uh, and I've recently come off of a, a, a pretty big marketing tech uh, private equity firm called Cision, which uh, I ended in January. So I'm a, I'm a tech guy, half of it in VCs and half of it in big, uh, big strategic companies. Great. So you've got a perspective on the business. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Pro Unlimited. Pro Unlimited, it's a very fascinating company. What it points at, I'll start there because if that's okay, I, and I didn't know this, a lot of people don't know this, uh, in the world of employment, we've known for a long time the kind of lower skill blue collar workers, you know, the put on thousands of people to staff the retail stores during holiday or put on thousands of people to go staff the warehouses for Amazon or Walmart during the holiday seasons of their peaks. We've known that non-full-time employee labor has been a big deal for decades there. Uh, the last three or four years, we've heard all about the gig economy, right? Those also aren't full-time employees, but that's uh, Airbnb, that's DoorDash, that's Uber. That's a big part of non-full-time employment too. Uh, what I didn't know, uh, and now I do, and what Pro does is 45% of white collar workers, right? Your developers, your IT, your cybersecurity, your marketing, your finance, 45% of those are actually contingent or non-FTE already. And that's going to be over half by this time next year. So that's what Pro focuses on is that almost half of white collar skilled, especially IT and development uh, uh, positions that are contingent or non-FTE. Um, and because it's gotten so big, you know, it's a big priority for the chief human resources officer. It's a big priority for the chief financial officer because that's a big spend category. And because now it's about employee data security and data and software applications and analytics and integrations into a bunch of other stuff, the CIO cares deeply about it. So, so Pro basically um, is that holistic platform, the data, the analytics, the software applications, the tech enabled services and all the integrations that allow Fortune 1000 companies to manage this half of the work uh, which is called contingent versus the full-time side where Workday and Oracle and SAP play. So that's a little bit about what we, what we do. Um, and that's a little bit about why customers work with us. Okay. You wouldn't really call yourself a headhunting company, would you? Or... We do not do that. No. Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, what we do do is help customers. If I'm a big Fortune 50 tech company, instead of having to work with a thousand executive search firms, and a thousand job boards and a thousand staffing agencies, you know, and, 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 we aggregate that entire world of, of labor supply chain into one place. So the way to think about those folks, Chris, is basically they're just one of many, many sources of potential labor or, or skilled workers that come into Pro and, and we manage all that for our customers. How does, uh, how does it work? Is it a cloud service that you should subscribe to or what? It is, uh, we are a SaaS company, right? Uh, software as a service, a DAS company, which is data as a service. Uh, so we're, we're a traditional cloud software model now. And we do offer uh, a subscription-based uh, level of tech-enabled services for companies that want us to help them versus run it completely uh, in-house themselves. So if I'm an HR officer and I'm looking for some to fill some positions, like, for example, my publisher, tech, technologyadvice.com, it's got 25 openings right now yeah. with different jobs. Would we simply subscribe and then is there a menu of services that we would um, look at or what? 
uh, a big menu, which I won't bore you with unless you want me to. But yeah, uh, it is, you, you can subscribe to our software as a service on a subscription basis. You can subscribe to our services if you'd like to on a subscription basis. And there is a very long menu from super simple to super complicated, from US only to 110 markets, from 10 job descriptions to 2000 job descriptions. That, that menu can be as simple as you want or that menu can be as big and all you can eat as you want. Um, but, but you subscribe, it's a simple subscription model, no matter how small or how big the appetite is. Simple is generally always good. So. We completely agree with that. Uh, how has the COVID pandemic pandemic affected your business this past year? Chris, great question. Uh, the answer is it didn't create this. Um, this shift from full-time employees working in offices to non-full-time employees working not in the offices, that was underway and alive and well and going up to the right anyway. COVID did put a huge gas can on that fire, right? It accelerated aggressively. So it didn't create it. It has accelerated really aggressively and it's become a forcing mechanism. So, and if I'm a big fortune 50 tech company, what I thought I might have five years to go do as this trend continued, um, I've got to now get done in five quarters. So didn't create it, certainly has accelerated it. Yeah, I would imagine the trend is gonna continue into this next yeah. year and maybe further out than that. Um, you know, this pandemic hit us so hard, so fast, but the- oh, I did it. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the lingering results are gonna do just that for a long time. Well, Chris, right. if, I, if, if I may be allowed, uh, I'll, let me put some numbers on what you just said. Right. In Q2, contingent workforce, which is 45% of these IT you know, workers, it dropped 56%, you know, versus pre-COVID in Q2. By Q4 of this year, uh, it's up 9% above pre-COVID levels. And the number one fastest growth category in that happens to be IT and tech positions. So it has, <laughs> it plummeted and now it's rocketing back up. Um, so, and that's all within the COVID year. So it's fascinating to watch. Right. Individually, uh, what sectors of IT are really looking for the most help right now? I, I keep hearing security. There's plenty of jobs yeah. in security, cybersecurity, and all the surrounding types of security. Is that true? You know what? It really is the entire CEO, CIO organization. It could be desktop. It could be help desk. It could be support. It could be infrastructure. It could be infosec. It could be data security. It could be cyber. Uh, the CIO and the head of development are in a war for talent like nobody's business and they can't hire these thousand right tech job descriptions enough. So the simple answer, Chris, is it, it is literally the CIO's entire org. It's not just a couple job descriptions. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, got a couple minutes left here. Uh, this is great. You give me a lot of good information very quickly. Um, um, what, uh, who are some of your customers or can you, can you name a couple of them so our readers can, um, can connect uh, familiar names with you? Yeah, yeah, you know, as, as most companies, our customers are a little bit reticent about me, you know, telling their names. I'll, I'll answer that two ways, Chris. Uh, you know, one, while tech is one of the biggest users of this, the tech industry, this is very broad, mm -hmm. professional services and healthcare and financial services and pharma and retail and automotive. Most industries do this stuff. Tech is the number one consumer of this contingent level stuff. And then it's pretty widespread. So for instance, FANG, right, which is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Um, four of the five FANG companies actually uh, rely on Pro to go take care of all the stuff we've discussed for them. So four out of five FANG is probably a good, you know, it's, it's a really good uh, way to think about just how prevalent this has become. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, you bet. And um, do you have any statistics on like how many jobs you've helped place in the last say year or two years or what? Uh, the, the, the number of jobs now is numbers in the hundreds of thousands uh, mm -hmm. and going up into the right very aggressively. And the number of job titles also numbers in the thousands. So um, we're not into millions yet. Uh, but, but we've got you know thousands and hundreds of thousands as far as the uh, the, the load, and we and again it's it's grown really aggressively. So that's just going to grow and expand. Great. And in wrapping up, in your market, who do you compete against? I mean, there's there's quite a few out there, but you seem really really busy. So that's a good sign. You know, it, it's very interesting. There are a few people that just do the data piece. There are a few people that just do the software piece. There are a few people that just do the analytics piece. You know, there are a few people that just do the services piece. 
we're a bit of a rare beast um, with com complete humility. That's not an advertorial for pro at all. We really are the only player that has put all of that together into one platform. So the answer is depending on which part of it, I got a lot of competitors for any individual piece. I don't really have a big competitor that has put it all together the way we have. Yeah, it kind of sounds like what our publisher, Rob Bellenfot told us recently at a company meeting. I asked him who's our, because you know we, we supply, yeah. we connect buyers and sellers of IT. Um, yeah. And we use our editorial to educate and instruct people and, and tell them about trends. And I asked him, who's our biggest competitor? He goes, well, Google, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow. That's really a really good, uh, insightful statement. Exactly. I hadn't really thought about it that way, but that's yeah. what people do. They go to Google first uh, before exactly. they'll go. So, well, and Chris, if you'd like, I can share a couple of trends that's happening in this world we've discussed for the last 15 yeah. minutes. If go not, ahead. we can save that for another time. But if you'd like to kind of hear the big trends in here, I can share a few of them with you. Yeah, go ahead. We have a couple. We have a couple minutes. Go okay, ahead. great, great. Uh, I'll be pretty. And trend number one that's worth mentioning is this isn't just office to remote. This is office to remote to global, right? Tech employers now have to go where the talent is, <laughs> and that means they're having to go global, right? So. Um, Bay Area office to, I got to go where the talent is in a hundred countries. That's a big trend, number one. Number two is the employer branding and culture and how I attract that talent is different, right? The free meals in the Google five-star lobby restaurant was a talent magnet for a long time. It's not anymore. I've got to go attract, right? Contingent, not full-time. So how I employ a brand, that's a big, big shift, especially for tech companies that uh, used to compete that way and don't anymore. Uh, the third one is, you know, we kind of touched on it, this is rapidly becoming about tech, about data, about analytics and about integration. So the CIO didn't pay much attention to this anymore. This is probably a top five CIO, CIO opportunity now. Um, trend number four is way more categories are being addressed. You know, this might've been a couple thousand employees and a hundred job descriptions. Now it's a hundred thousand employees across thousands of job descriptions. Uh, the second to last one is this diversity inclusion thing has become really, really big and really important. And you got to throw data analytics and software at diversity and inclusion. And then the last one is, you know, there's a trend towards complexity, right? There's legislation and compliance and H1B and Prop 22 and AB5 and all the legislation that's going on in the Netherlands and the UK. So this is getting kind of sticky and complicated and, and companies that are growing this way have to pay attention to all that governance and compliance and legislation stuff too. So. That's a quick list of kind of what I think are the big driving trends that all of our tech companies and companies regardless uh, are really looking at as they look to address this opportunity slash challenge. Yeah, Kevin, thanks for that insight and for those do it. for giving us those trends. I think that's important. And man, there's a lot of moving parts in your business. I don't know how you keep track of it all. Uh, we, uh, we're busy <laughs> and so are, so are our clients. Our clients are really busy, so, so we're busy. Sounds good. Well. Thanks for this and for introducing us to Pro um, to Pro Unlimited. Um, I don't think we've we've covered uh, the company before, but now we've got a stake in the ground here on our YouTube channel, and we'll do a story on uh, uh, accompanying this for eWeek soon. As soon as Great. we can. Well, it's, it's it's a it's a pleasure to meet you, and it's a pleasure to participate in this. So thank you. Yeah, Kevin. Well, good to meet you, and uh, thanks for joining us on uh, this section or this segment of uh, eSpeaks. You bet. Thank you. For everybody following along to the end here, thank you very much and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.